So what it is about is about picking the right tool for the right job. And the first one we're going to look at today is AutoCAD architecture. So this is the AutoCAD plus productivity tools for people who do architectural type stuff. I'm sure there's some of them in the room. So what I want you to concentrate on now is Simon's screen. This is AutoCAD architecture. <coughs> so it's everything that is in AutoCAD. It has in it, though, all the MBS standards, the National Building Standards in there. And there we are. Look how visual it is. So if we pick that universal beam, there's all the sizes that we put in manually, yeah? You can just drag it in and drop it in. Now, think about going back to the office and doing that in AutoCAD now. Note when he hovers over it, you've got all that detailed component information in there as well. We can utilise that information later on. Uh, let's go back in and start adding some uh, more stuff in there. We're going to stick a slab in here. And what I want you to note is when Simon puts the uh, floor slab in, note the edges are nice and easily, they're all tidied up for him. He just drags it to the length he wants and it hatches it for him and it tidies it up for him. Dead easy. Uh, okay, back into there and we'll put some uh, footings in there. Because it's AutoCAD, it's going to use all the AutoCAD commands. So let's just change the snap point to the midpoint and snap the footings in. Very, very intuitive and easy. Uh, next thing we're going to put in, we can search for things. We don't have to <coughs> go in and look. We'll just search for cavity walls and it's now just going to return all the cavity walls. And we'll just drag them in. No, when he puts it in, he doesn't have to array it up. He just drags up the length he wants. Sticks the bricks in for him. It hatches it. it tidies my wall's slow. Or what have you done? I said my wall's slope. I wouldn't be different. Oh, did you not go straight up? No. Nah. Uh, rubbish drafter. Hey, but still, it's quick, isn't it? Delete it, start again. Undo. Best up, command in Arcade. <coughs> yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. That should be on there, shouldn't it? Undo. 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 Best command ever. Yeah. Uh, okay, other stuff that we can do in there is we're going to use our AutoCAD commands and we can either copy this or move it. What are you doing today, Sarah? I'll decide to do move today. Okay, we're going to move it, snap it up there. Now this is a three-dimensional object, it's not a 2D object, so we can just add the selected object back in again, so just add the selected, but change its view from a section view to an elevation view. Just flip the X and Y on there, look, there we are. So we've got the same object in, but now on an elevation view, in a section view. How easy is that? Much, much better. Uh, let's just tidy that up there, we'll stick a floor above the uh, universal beam now, uh, and again, Watch Simon just drag it. Note the two ends are tidied for him. Okay, all tidied up for him. He doesn't have to do all of that. Let's just tidy up the wall, Simon. We'll stick a, a bit of single cavity uh, on the outside of that. <coughs> there we are, a bit of single cavity on the outside. There we go. Okay, uh, the next thing that we're going to do, what we're going to do, look at the tool palette, Simon, or... Oh, no, we can have a tape. Remember that information that was... He hovered over and all that information was in there. So we just add some keynotes based on that information. Now we have styled these so they look pretty on the projector. Obviously in the real world it would be probably a bit smaller and a bit easier. But we can just simply select the object, drag it out, and the annotation will appear. It will always be correct then. You're not going to make an error on that. And of course if the object changes, the annotation will change uh, with it as well. I think that's um, productivity tool, is it? Yeah, I probably agree with you there. I'll tell you now before you forget to put it on. Yeah. I don't know where it is, mate. Detailed component library. That's the one. Top productivity tool lab. Makes life a lot easier. Now, tool palettes. Do we all use tool palettes? If you don't use tool palettes, you're missing out on the productivity tool because you can stick anything you want on there. They're brilliant. Uh, we can go in here and we can select all the walls, for example. We don't have to go into the detailed component manual. We can stick what we want on, uh, on here. And we'll just drag it down. Note how tidy it is at the end. It's done it for him. You don't have to do anything there, which is dead easy. But we can apply that to existing line work. So all your old LT drawings or your AutoCAD drawings in 2D, not a problem. We just apply that style to these line work and there we are, it's done it for him. If we move them, it's intelligent. It's going to tidy up the corner for him automatically. So anybody who's doing this kind of work, it's going to make life just so much quicker, isn't it? Uh, let's add some, uh, a door in there. Now, uh, notice it's got lots of doors in there. These are just the ones that we've put on the uh, tool palette standard. And when Simon pops in, it'll open up the gap, it'll tidy it up, he can use his AutoCAD to position it. Uh, there it is, it's a dynamic block, so we can flip the leaf, etc. Um, really, really uh, intuitively, when we move it, it's going to move to a size. There we are, resizing it to a size that you can buy, you know, that's from the manufacturer. You can't put a door in it, you can't buy, for example. You can do exactly the same with windows, and again, there's a whole more, load more of them. Just slide it in, put it where you want, and size it 
to a size that actually exists that you can actually buy. Uh, okay, next job is um, we've got all the standard AutoCAD <coughs> tools in here. So we'll just switch it to load detail so it's a bit easier to see on here. We're just going to use copy and uh, we're going to copy our wall down. Notice how it tidies up the corners. There's no cutting out you needed to do. You don't need to do trim or anything like that. But we can use our standard trim commands. In fact, all your AutoCAD commands work on these components. So fill it and trim and extend and copy and move and paste and all these things. So let's just trim that building out in there and uh, do a bit of extending. <coughs> did that wrong, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's rubbish, isn't it? I am. Just, uh, give me a rabbit any day. <laughs> there we go. Just extend that up. There you go. Okay. Uh, the one thing that you might be thinking, those of you that are uh, uh, students, thinking, hang on a minute, they're all external walls you've stuck in there, not a problem. Select all the walls, change them in the properties to be internal block work. You're just changing the style of them after all. And now that's uh, internal block work. Which is great. Uh, okay, next job is, uh, let's go back to low detail, and uh, we'll stick some door schedules in. Hands up who does scheduling, anyone? Do you know you do scheduling? Yeah, you do scheduling. Those of you, hands up who like scheduling? <laughs> Nobody, of course you don't. It's boring as hell. We, we have made this um, uh, uh, a bit basic, you know, just so, again, it fits on the projector that you can see it. But every time Simon puts a door in, he adds it to the schedule. So it's always going to be right. If he takes the door away, he'll take it away from the schedule. He doesn't have to go around counting these damn things and making sure they're right and then double-checking it and triple-checking it. All right? So there we are, just plonk a few doors in there, a few internal and external doors. Uh, the same is true for windows as well. We can do a window schedule and it will automatically add them in. What I want you to know, when Simon copies the window over, note the orientation of the window is currently vertical, but it doesn't matter what he puts it in. So you put it in a horizontal wall, it realises that you'd never have a window like that, so it automatically rotates the uh, orientation of the window. Makes life a lot easier, I think. We can move that one around. There we go. Now the next thing is going to change the size of the window. Just have a look at the schedule. Change the size of the window. The schedule automatically changes for him. So it's going to be right. He's not going to uh, make a mistake. And I think that is also automatic scheduling top tip. I think that's brilliant, though. If you, if you end up doing a big building, that can be a nightmare, can't it? Uh, now I mentioned it earlier. I hinted earlier that Simon is actually drawing in three dimensions. He's not drawing in 2D. So he's just going to plonk a roof slab on there, maybe change the picture a little bit. Um, and AutoCAD Architecture has got a, a built-in object viewer, because you want to draft in 2D, you don't want to draft in three-dimensional mode, but we can view the object in three dimensions, and there it is, that's what he's just drawn, from that line work. Okay, it took him seconds, well, minutes, but if I hadn't been rabbiting on it, it would have been seconds, I'm sure. Other nice features, some of the verticals have great features, and um, because Simon's been drawing in three dimensions, he can do uh, an elevation view, okay? And I know anybody who does an elevation view, and the, uh, the design changes, you have to go away and redraw the elevation view. We don't have to do that. <coughs> so we're to draw the, uh, uh, the view, so stick that in there, and it'll generate it for me. And there's the elevation view. It'll hatch it up if you change the detail to high there, Simon, or medium, yeah. There you go, it'll hatch it up for him as well. Okay, so that elevation. And of course, if the drawing changes, if the model changes, all Simon has to do is regenerate the uh, uh, section view and it'll uh, do it for him. Hey, this function I like, watch this, top tip this one. This is only in architecture and civil. If you right mouse click, you can hide selected objects. So even if they're on the same layer, you can hide one without turning the layer off and then bring them back later on. Uh, I find it really annoying when I go back to AutoCAD not having that function. Okay, let's stick in there some room schedules now. All right, so we're going to pop a, a room schedule. So we're going to style a room up based on the, the schedule. We are going to do it in paper space purely just because it's more visual for you guys on this screen here. Otherwise, there'll be things all over the place. And Simon will be panning, and you'll get dizzy, and then you'll complain at us, and we'll get bad feedback, and then we'll never have to do it again. Way! No, let's not say that. Right, so uh, let's stick in a space. Okay, so we're going to style this. Uh, uh, theme here as an educational space and once again we have cut this down you know obviously an educational established has a lot more rooms than that so let's stick all these rooms in here just generate the space 
You go to the properties and start putting in a style for each of 